Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our fifth webinar in this six part series hosted by Rockflow Dynamics. My name is Joanne Lamb from RFD Aberdeen team. Today's session will be hosted by my colleague Dimitri Idnov from our Moscow office. Firstly, we just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has registered and joined us today. Rockflow Dynamics teams across the world are continuing to work from home and we're still here to support all of our clients via email and conference call. So if you require any assistance, please get in touch with us via the usual method. But most importantly, we hope everyone is safe and well. Welcome. If you haven't joined the previous webinars in this series, this is how it will work. All of the attendees will have their microphone automatically muted. So if you would like to ask any questions, please use the window in the control panel and we'll answer as many of those as we can at the end. If we don't have time to address all the questions live, we will answer those offline and share with all attendees. The session is being recorded and that will be available later this afternoon on our YouTube channel. If you'd like any more information at all, you can email us asktnav at ifdyn.com. This webinar series is being hosted from six of our worldwide support offices over a three week period. We have already heard presentations from our teams in the UK, Malaysia, USA and Canada. After today's session, we will hand over to our Perth office for the final installment. Today, we are broadcasting from Moscow. Previous webinars have explored the workflows available inside T-Navigator for both static and dynamic modelling. If you missed any of these first four sessions, you can watch them now on our YouTube channel or download them from our customer support portal. In today's webinar, production optimization under uncertainty based on multiple model realisations, Dimitri will be carrying out a demonstration of the workflows you can use to find the best development schemes and control parameters on, on multiple realisations of the reservoir model. And for our final session on Thursday, Andreas will showcase T-Navigator's network modelling functions, demonstrating how engineers can generate integrated asset models to analyse the effect of surface facilities on the reservoir using a fully implicit approach. In this webinar series, we have been showing you demonstrations from each stage of the integrated workflow inside T-Navigator. If there is a functionality you would like to hear more about, don't hesitate to get in touch with the team for further details and trial licenses. So now I would like to hand over to Dimitri to begin the presentation. Thank you, Dimitri. Thanks, John. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, great to see you all here. Uh, uh, great that you, you made it despite the, the unusual circumstances. Today's talk about the production optimization under uncertainty based on multiple model realizations. Well, uncertainty is a particularly important topic for these days because uh, this this time it's uh, the level of it is far far beyond normal. So I think that uh, I believe you will find it useful. Uh, a little bit of agenda today. The talk will be mostly concentrated on assisted history machine and uncertainty module in T-Navigator. Uh, we will cover some topics about uncertainty field development planning in general why is it important why why it needs to be considered then we consider a workflow for production optimization under uncertainty that has recently been developed in t navigator and made available in pretty much automatic mode which is quite unique for this type of software and uh after the the demonstrate the presentation we'll ha we'll have a short leave demo where I will guide you through the key points of the workflow and show how it works in the software. At the end, we'll have some questions and answers. We'll try to take as many as we can, but uh, if we run out of time, we'll come back with follow-up as John has already mentioned. So, uh, as we all know, these days, the level of uncertainty in reservoir uh, parameters is quite significant, and it's quite important to consider multiple possibilities for reliable decisions. So if we if you look at this picture, we definitely don't want to be this guy because he's too conservative and may miss significant potentials in field development uh, with negative scenarios. On the other hand, we definitely don't want to be too optimistic because in this case, our decisions become not quite reliable and we can significantly overestimate the potential and the outcome. So ideally, we would like to know 
the average or something like a safe decision we want to and we also we need to know the borders how low can we go how high can we go and this is what we do in uncertainty quantification for field development planning uh, this is an illustration why uh, multiple realizations are actually important let's consider a simple example we have a field one realization one history matched model that makes good match with the history and then we have the base case which is do nothing and production plan based on single realization and we also have three potential locations for infill well drilling uh, if we use traditional deterministic approach we test each of three locations on a single realization and then we see we just compare the plots for all three and in that case it's it appears that in field location number three uh, it turns out to be the most efficient because the cumulative oil production is higher there however if for the same case we consider multiple realizations which in this example was eight models we will see that the range of uncertainty for the same in field locations uh, is, is significant so basically the range shows how this location works for eight models from uh, downside to upside and we can see that the location number three, which was based on a single model uh, looking like the best, may actually give almost no improvement compared to do nothing. So this is, from that point of view, definitely not the best. And uh, from that point of view, applying probabilistic approach to production for a customer, we would definitely go for the second location because it gives us guaranteed income, guaranteed improvement in the production, and uh, reasonable uncertainty range uh, uh, there has been there have been a lot of studies about these topics and I would like to reference one of the like, classical works uh, done by BP uh, when they developed TDRM approach and they report in average 20% increase in NPV when probabilistic approach is adopted so it's definitely worth considering it's definitely worth the effort uh, it's very important to mention that uh, multiple history match models can only be recovered from assisted history matching because doing it manually we will be uh, quite subjective we will follow the same path and even if we repeat history matching exercises many times based on various base models we are very likely to find very similar solutions so this is probably the most important thing when it comes to assisted history matching bigger advantage over uh, classical manual approach. At this point, I would like to pass back to John, and we will have a, a little pool for you uh, just to uh, share information how your companies and yourself approach uh, uncertainty, uncertainty quantification in field development planning. John? Cool, I'm just launching that now. Hopefully, everyone can see that on their screen just now. Um, we'll just give you a few seconds to vote on that one and then I'll close it off, share the results with everyone and let Dimitri comment. So I can see some responses coming in just now. Still quite a few coming in, so just a few more seconds there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that just now. And can you see the results on your screen there, hopefully? Uh, yes, thanks, John. Uh, well, it looks good. It looks like we are all quite well educated. So <laughs> the last one didn't get too many votes and companies are either do detailed assessment of uh, multiple realizations or moving in this direction it's great to know and uh well we hope that the development that we are going to show today will be useful for that i'm taking the controls back thank you very much john thank you let's move on so well based on the feedback from from the pool i assume that 
most of you are familiar with what assisted history imagine and certain packages are. I'll just have a quick overview of what, what they consist of. Uh, basically, there are several things that are essential for these kind of packages. First is experimental design methods that allow you to search to, to discover multiple possibilities in the solution space. They are predefined, so you run, uh, the, there are no iterations, you just refine the solution space and, and have a sort of uh, grid search there or maybe some more sophisticated techniques like lighting hypercube or black like dormant that only works with ages. Basically, it's about sensitivity and exploring the uncertainty range. Dimitri, Second sorry thing. to interrupt. I think you need to show your screen again, please. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, can can you see it now? Uh, one second. Mm. The button doesn't seem to be active. Oh, hang on a second. Try that now. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I oh, sorry about that. Sorry for for the issue. So once again. Uh, experimental design methods. They they search through the through the solution space. Second thing is optimization algorithms. They allow you to iteratively move and improve uh, objective function, which can be either uh, minimizing mismatch for assisted history matching process, or you can, on the other hand, for production optimization, you can uh, optimize uh, increase uh, oil production, cumulative oil production, NPV or any other criteria. Uh, this is the list of methods available in G-Navigator. Our uh, conception here is that we don't want to limit the consideration to some specific generation and families of the methods. They're all good for, for, for some purposes. They all work to some extent. So we try to have as much as, as possible and we keep adding them. One of the recent add-ons to optimization or ensemble methods and artificial intelligence based on neural networks. Uh, the second part of the uh, assisted history machine and uncertainty packages is analytic part. And this is probably equally important to the optimizers and experimental design method. This is how we evaluate uh, multiple models. And the analysis, the, the philosophy of this analysis is quite different from classical deterministic approach where we compare cases one by one. In in uh, in uncertainty package, we actually compare trends. We we identify correlations. We we work with multiple plots. We see ranges. We see cross plots. So this all allows us to analyze um, analyze the the simulation results as a kind of big data to see to see correlations and trends. And it helps to to identify the solutions and move in the right direction. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention specifically for, for Team Navigator is that uh, we develop different parts of the workflow in a single application. So, for instance, if you would like to consider uh, some geo uncertainties and uncertainties related to the simulation model, you can do it basically in one application. And there are different modules responsible for it, but the integration is quite seamless and you can easily. Uh, integrate uh, geological model and simulation model as one thing, as one model of, of a reservoir uh, via workflows. Also for um, uh, uncertainty analysis and history matching, it's quite important to have uh, fast computations because the more we run, the more results we get, the better we uh, investigate the, the solution range and uncertainty range. So for this part, uh, T Navigator engine seems to be a good match because we can, as you, as most of you know, we can run a multi-core CPUs, uh, graphical cards. We also have some CPU, GPU hybrid schemes, clusters. Uh, we can use clouds. So this is all very helpful. Uh, coming back to uh, production optimization under uncertainty. There are two possibilities. We, we can either work with greenfield or brownfield. And uh, we've seen many times that people actually consider it quite differently, quite different workflows. However, essentially, they are pretty much the same. Basically, for greenfields, we consider the range of possibilities. We have several models that uh, map the solution space, and then we work with them for optimization. 
for the brown fields, the only difference is that we need to run uh, to condition these models to historical data. So we don't pick arbitrary uh, models from the range, but we pick only those who provide history match, but they can be quite different with different input parameters. So for the latter case, when we have production history, step one would be obtaining multiple models that match the production history. And then we move to prediction, and ideally we would like to maximize uh, this uh, range. So we would like to move all these models higher to get uh, uh, the maximum oil recovery or maximum NPV. And the challenge here, and this is actually the challenge for all uh, uncertainty packages and history matching packages, that in that case we actually have to work with all these base models. We have to optimize them somehow simultaneously. And uh, to, to the best of our knowledge, it hasn't been done in any commercial packages before. So what we often see in publications and uh, based on client feedback is that a typical scenario when it comes to production optimization under uncertainty is to take three or maybe more models in general and run optimization of, uh, of the production or development scheme on P50, which is the average, which is like the best representative among all of them. So we basically optimize this number and then having found uh, the well parameters uh, and development scheme, particular case, we kind of replicate it on, on other models like P10 and P P90 to obtain the uncertainty range. However, this, case, this workflow is actually very limited because we run optimization on a very, on a very basic single case effectively. We just extrapolate it to other models, but we don't do proper optimization in this case. What we would like to propose and we would find as a proper approach to this problem uh, is to take all of them into account simultaneously. And instead of uh, maximizing, let's say, all the recovery for one case, we should optimize the average. So we can define for whatever arithmetic average over three or four or five realizations, whatever we, we would like to consider. Or we can also take P10, P30, P70, and optimize those numbers, in which case we will move from less risky uh, decision to less, uh, to, from more risky decisions to more conservative decisions, depending on the average that we pick up for the objective function. So the way it works based on three models is quite straightforward. We have three, let's say three base models. We evaluate the objective function, which in case of production optimization can be, for instance, maximized oil production, and then we compute the generalized objective function, which is the average of all three. And then the optimizer, it iteratively produces new realizations of the forecast parameters and proceeds for the next iteration. But it's very important that generalized objective function is not just based on an average case, it's based on average of all of them. So we improve them all together. And every new realization, which has higher objective function will be better than the previous one. Uh, with with account for uncertainty, I mean. So in all, in case of three models, this is how it looks like. Let's say we have three uh, base models that match the history equally well, and then we try the same well placement on all of them. And each of them will produce a sequence of uh, objective function values. We want to go higher for production optimization in this case. And the average, the, the target criteria will be calculated as the average of all three. So we, we will improve them all together. You can see on this plot that they all go higher uh, together. Okay, so uh, now I would like to go for a demo and I'll show you a specific example, a very small test model with uh, one injector, three producing wells, short history, and in this case, we are going to use uh, permeability multipliers, KVKH, real terms, and contact depths as uncertainty parameter to produce multiple uh, multiple realizations for, for the uh, prediction. And then based on the set of models found, we are going to optimize the trajectory of a new well, of a new horizontal well. And this is the way uh, variables for the well are parameterized. Basically, we, we change the heel point coordinates and then we change the angles angles and uh, the rate 
production rate. And we would like to maximize the uh, total oil production for, for, for the field based on these parameters. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the software. This is my engine navigator window. I open the base cache, which is here. Okay, here is my model. Uh, only historical cache, no, no, no uh, forecast here yet. Uh, I would like to highlight one point. If I, for instance, I'm currently in the simulation window, so it's more like a post-processor. I can proceed to history machine right from here, and this is what I'm going to do. But I could also go take a step back and go to model designer. If I do that, um, that will make a project uh, that will convert uh, uh, the simulation input to original inputs as we work in post in preprocessor. So for instance, I can choose to generate well trajectories from, from predefined comp dots. I can, I can choose what I would like to do with schedule and it will kind of decompose the, the whole model into original inputs and will create a, a, a project in preprocessor mode. This is a very useful feature if you only happen to have a simulation case without original preprocessor project. Here we go. So we can, for instance, see the grid here. We can uh, see properties, everything is here. So we can work with the model. The wells are converted to trajectories. So I can, I can change it in a, like in a proper preprocessor mode. If I would like to consider to consider a workflow with variables for integrated uncertainty uh, study or integrated optimization, I can go to workflows or record actions that will make me a sequence of operations in which in each of them I can have variables that will be changing in the assisted history matching process. In this case, for the sake of simplicity, let's just go back to uh, to the simulation deck. And uh, I can I can initiate history matching project from here. Uh, I choose history matching variable manager. I have already a couple of them defined in the input deck. I can also add some pre based on the predefined templates. I can add a few more. For instance, we can include contacts, uh, define ranges for them. We can uh, introduce real terms, so that will create templates and uh, mm, vari variable definitions automatically. From here, I just press create history matching project. Jim. Choose whether where I would like to run locally or on a cluster if I have a remote cluster connected to my network. And it brings me to the project. I choose some service parameters, what I would like to input output. And let's say, choose latent hyper cube with 100 iterations. When I press OK, it will submit the simulations. And I'm, I, with just a few clicks, I've moved from a single realization to multiple realization with variables. I have done this exercise before just to save time on simulations. So I actually have these calculations complete here. We have 200 cases. And my objective function, which I defined for assisted history machine, was very simple. Total oil production, total water production for the field level. And I wanted to minimize the difference between uh, history and the simulation results. So as you can see, I have quite a significant range. It's closer and better for oil total. For water total, it's, it's, um, we have a very wide range of uh, possibilities. So for... Uh, to proceed for uh, production optimization, I have to pick the models that I would like to use. So if I range in this results table, if I range it based on, on my objective function uh, value, I can choose the best ones, let's say up to 20 here, and I can look at them at the plots. 
So for oil total, they are all matched. For water total, let's remove the worst one. I can do it with just a couple of clicks. And then we add three models. We, le we left three, three models that are kind of good enough qualitatively history match my oil and water production, water and oil production, so I can proceed with them. Remember, these are history matched cases. So if I want to add forecast here, I only need to press here, make highlight them and make right click to create forecast for uh, selected variants. That will create restart models and will add my forecast file, which I prepared in advance, where I have all the variables related to my uh, forecast uh, schedule part, and the changes will take effect. And then I press here again and uh, click on this option, create forecast optimization under uncertainty for selected variants. What it will do, these three models have different parameters of the uh, reservoir, uh, of the res uh, different values of the reservoir parameters. They are different, they, are, they have different inputs. And these inputs are fixed, so these variables are not active anymore. And these are my variables for prediction. If I choose all of them, and I choose objective function, which uh, I defined as maximum oil production, very simple in this case, uh, and press OK, choose one of the optimization algorithms that will start producing cases. Let's have a look at the objective function as I defined it. This is just oil total for, for the field level. Very simple, quite straightforward. I could go more sophisticated. I could add some NPV settings and maximize on NPV if I, if I have all the inputs and I'm, I would like to optimize the economics directly. Uh, let's jump to the next stage. I have run all these cases uh, before before the meeting to save time, and uh, let's look what we have for for the prediction phase. I would like to remind that in this case, optimizer was actually improving the average of max oil, my objective function, over three base realizations. So we have quite a lot of them here. Uh, the optimizer was working like for an hour or so and created quite a lot of cases. They're mixed. So for each variant of the product of the prediction of the well placement, we have three realizations here. How can we possibly differentiate them? If you look at the cross plot, for instance, and uh, visualize, uh, for instance, objective function. They're quite mixed. To differentiate them, we can go here, click this button, and colorize them based on uh, some criteria. In this case, I would like to go to, uh, let's say, gradient, and I would like to choose parent variant number. We have three models, one, two, three, and this is how we progress with each realization. So all blue dots here will represent a single realization, let's say model number one, a green one will be model number two, and the red one will be the model number three. So we can see how they progress together. Of course, on the plots, we can also highlight them this way, so we can see how they do. In, in general, based on this cross plot, I can say that definitely if we consider only green realization as a single base case, we would probably be too optimistic. If we consider only blue case, we would be lower with uh, with our expectations and uh, had a risk of not developing the potential. Uh, let's see what we do with uh, generalized max oil. Generalized max oil will be the average of all three. And for each one, as we have variant number in, in on the x-axis, which is uh, like ID for, for each model. Uh, for each one, we'll have three dots here, blue, green, and, and red. So they, they, they optimized all together. We started here. This was our original initial guess for the well placement. And then we've reached here. As we can see, uh, the improvement is roughly 30% compared to the base case for, for the prediction. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, at the plots for 
uh, for uh, for oil production. Uh, let's add uh, generalized max oil here to the table and max oil itself to see the values. Okay, so if we range based on generalized models, generalized max oil, these are our best best cases, highest uh, numbers for oil production, and these are our worst cases. And as you can see, the three, the average is the same for all three, but the, the range is here. So we can see what's the difference between them. Now let's go back, back to the coloring and add another gradient uh, where I would like to color them based on generalized variant number. That will be effectively the iteration of the optimization algorithm. So I press here and then uh, let's choose the best one and the case that's close to base. This is how we improved. So this is one of the worst cases, which was the original actually. Uh, and this is how far we got with optimizing well trajectory and well controls in automatic way. Let's add something in the middle or actually closer, closer to the best to see the difference between latest iterations. It's not obvious here or there. So the red ones, as you can see, they are all lower than, than the orange ones and average is better. So if we add, let's say three more here, we can see how, how we improve with this each iteration. So clearly the, uh, the uh, potential was developed much further in this experiment. And uh, this plot show us the, the range of uncertainty for the prediction. If our base cases are representative enough for geological uncertainty, the range here will be effectively our uh, uncertainty quantification for this specific development scenario. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think I'll stop here with the uh, demonstration. And before we go to questions, I'll pass to back to John. Thank John. you, thank you, Dimitri. And um, so, as we said at the start, if you do have any questions, you can just type those into the panel uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll just give Dimitri a minute or so to have a look through um, the questions because we do have quite a few coming in. And oh. just to remind you that the webinar is being recorded, so if you do want to um, catch up, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. And we invite you to join us for the next and final session of this series, which is taking place on Thursday. Um, and that is taking place at 2.30 Western Australia time from our Perth office. And there'll also be a short survey once you come out of the webinar today. Um, and we're in the middle of planning the next phase of our webinars. So if you do have any suggestions for topics that you'd like to see us cover, um, then please do let us know when we can take that into consideration. Dimitri, do we have some questions that you would like to answer? Yeah, it's great, great to see that we have a lot. Uh, I don't think we have time to answer all of them, but uh, we will definitely come back with with response. Uh, let me take the first ones. Uh, uh, the the these workflows. Uh, these workflows uh, require massive hardware resources. Uh, can we adopt the technology without it? Uh, and I see a parallel question, which, which we can tie together for optimization under uncertainty, let's say for the horizontal well trajectory optimization example, based on a series of realizations, how many realizations are enough to give a meaningful result? Uh, I think it's fair to say that we should do best, best, best we can with available resources and even for, for some models uh, that have a reasonable simulation time, you can actually go quite far. You don't have to run 10,000 of cases. In this example, which was, yes, quite basic, but actually also quite representative. I have run uh, overall, I think the whole experiment with history matching and optimization for uncertainty was 600 cases. So you can do a simple estimate actually. If you have, for instance, uh, your simulation time equals to one hour, 
and you, you only have one computer. You can do 24 uh, a, a day. And then even if you leave for a weekend and you don't, and you leave it to run, for instance, Lazy Hypercube, not for 200 realizations, but for uh, what, what is it, 72 realizations, you're away for after three days with nights. You can still get a lot of information. You can still recover some multiple possibilities. Then when it comes to production optimization, suppose you can afford running 200 cases. It will still be better than your base case and manual optimization because you, you consider a lot more factors uh, this way, in automatic way. Moreover, I would like to remind that hardware these days is more economical and affordable, so you can have it in house. And in case uh, you only need it occasionally, I think cloud is actually a very good option. Because you prepare a case, you generate all the inputs, and then you just upload it to the cloud and run it over weekend. You pay several hundred dollars, and then you get whatever, 10,000 realizations. And you pay just for what you use. It's actually quite practical for, for this kind of workflows. So you can easily scale on the cloud and run uh, and run uh, multiple realizations only when you need it and pay just for that. Uh, uh, another one, uh, the demo trajectory of the well is the same in all cases. No, it wasn't actually. This is what we optimized. During this optimization, we were changing the well trajectory. So every iteration of optimization algorithm in the prediction mode was generating different realizations of the well trajectory and was optimizing it step by step. So every next iteration we, we, would give better results for uh oil total production uh let's see one more uh, what is the best optimization algorithm in one team navigator options well as, as i said we we prefer to have all of them so we have pretty much all techniques that are available in uh that were developed by the research and and uh, uh, software community, IT community in, in our area. We will be adding more, uh, uh, but in many cases, uh, I would say that optimization algorithms may be not so critical. The choice of optimization, they, they will do the job pretty much. Uh, the thing is actually, the, the most important thing is proper uh, mapping of the problem, defining uncertainty ranges, defining objective functions, uh, and then, of course, the more cases you run, the more outcome you get from these uh, cases. So optimizing hardware resources, simulation time may be quite useful exercise. But even if the model is heavy, definitely make your computer work on the weekend. Set up a few variables. You've seen how, how easy it is in T-Navigator. Give it ranges, run it for 72 hours that you are out of the office. Then even if uh if the results are not satisfactory you just throw it away by pressing one delete button but in many ways you will actually see a lot of uh, data to work with and a lot of data to analyze and which will in turn lead to better understanding of the uncertainty uh, and behavior of the model of the reservoir model uh well i think we we are running out of time uh it's time to say thank you i'm sorry if i left your questions unattended we'll come back later directly and uh initiate discussions if you are interested in this workflows if you have any any questions or you would like to have a demo or you'd like to try it yourself or you have a practical case uh that requires something like this please do get in touch we'll be happy to support by all means we work from homes uh and uh, maintain 24 7 uh, support services as usual uh, well beyond that i wish everyone remain safe i hope to <laughs> i hope to have a chance to see you all around the world this year or even early this year i hope so uh, take care thank you very much for your participation thank you very much dimitri and thank you very much again for everyone for joining us today and we hope to see you on Thursday for the, the final instalment of this webinar series. We'll just leave the window open for 
one more minute in case anyone has any final questions um, so we can pick those up. But thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.